So here's a scary thought. Marjorie Taylor Greene in the White House. Imagine that. You know, it's actually a possibility because according to a report from NBC News, two people who spoke with her says that she indeed wants the job and she wants that job really bad. Now, the first person who they spoke to is Steve Bannon, who says that she sees herself on Trump's short list of picks. And the second source is an advisor with close ties to Trump that basically confirms that and says that she is indeed on Trump's short list of VP picks, assuming that he does secure the GOP nomination. So pretty scary, but this is the reality. So it's best not to bury our heads in the sand. And it's best for us to grapple with this news so we can try to figure out how to react to a possible Marjorie Taylor Greene vice presidency or presidency because Trump is 76 years old. But either way, let's get to the article here. So NBC News reports, a second source who has advised Green said her whole vision is to be vice president. The source who has ties to Trump but spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe private conversations said he also believes Green would be on Trump's shortlist. That goal is at the heart of Green's recent efforts to rebrand herself as a politician who can stand astride the divide between the party's hardliners and its establishment wing, the source has told NBC News. It also helps explain why she threw herself into helping elect Representative Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House after the midterm election and took assignments on two committees, Homeland Security and Oversight and Accountability, where she can participate in high-profile investigations of President Joe Biden's administration. McCarthy also tapped her to be part of the panel investigating how the government handled the COVID-19 pandemic. Her push for McCarthy alienated some of her allies in the House Freedom Caucus and like-minded conservative activists, but that was a calculated risk according to Bannon. Now, the fact that she's actively campaigning for the role isn't necessarily that surprising considering the response that she gave back in August when she was asked about the prospect of becoming Trump's VP. As people are starting to look forward to 2024, I think there's consensus, uh, uh, mostly among our audience anyway, and with most of the people that I've spoken with here, that Donald Trump needs to be the nominee and anybody else is sort of a distraction at this point at least that's what i'm hearing from people um but that i hear the words mtg mentioned a lot hello as somebody who'd be a great running mate for donald trump i just wonder what what you do with that well i you know what i think if he asked me i would definitely give that some strong consideration okay. i love president trump i i never i never hide that fact I think he's wonderful. I have a great relationship with him. I talk to him frequently. I'm, gr I'm so thankful for him and his family, as we all are. And I defend him all the time. I, I swear I would, I would fight for that man because he fought for us. And that's the kind of president we need back. And if, if, if he were to ask me, of course, I, I would be honored. So we went from, well, I guess if he asked me, <laughs> Tihi. I'd have to accept the job. I'd be obliged to do it out of a sense of duty for my country to, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want it. In fact, I'm jockeying for this position and trying to influence him to pick me. That's, uh, that's pretty scary, especially considering the fact that her advisor confirms this and that same advisor has ties to Donald Trump and is confirming the fact that she is indeed right to believe that she is on Trump's list of uh, VP options. Now, listen, this is all assuming Trump wins the GOP nomination, right? Now, at this point in time, it's still early, but he seems poised to win. He's certainly the favorite at this moment. Now, he will still have to compete for the GOP's nomination, obviously. And whether or not DeSantis can actually beat him or someone else, that's still up for debate. But just look at these polls. This is courtesy of Real Clear Politics. Every single poll shows that he is in the lead. And we're not just talking about small leads here. Most polls show that he has double digit leads and his average, yeah, declined over the course of time. But still, that's a massive lead for any GOP primary challenger to make up, even if his numbers have decreased. Now, couple that with the fact that an Emerson College poll released on Tuesday found that Trump beats Biden by three points in a head to head matchup. And we're looking at a recipe for disaster here, folks. Trump is currently the favorite to be the GOP nominee for 2024. And according to hypothetical matchups, he beats Biden. So if he were to pick Marjorie Taylor Greene, she'd be this close to power. And need I remind you, Donald Trump is 76 years old. So this is all very frightening to think about. But really what I want to emphasize here is that we all need to be 
active rather than reactive. And I'm directing this message specifically towards anyone within the Democratic Party who has influence or power, assuming they're going to watch this, they won't. But understand that we don't have to just wait when we see a gigantic truck heading towards us. Like, we can jump out of the way. We don't have to just accept our fate and get hit by the truck. We can we can change things currently. There's still enough time. So how do we change this? How do we stop Marjorie Taylor Greene from becoming the vice president or potentially president? Well, we force Biden to get the fuck out of the way because I'm sorry, Biden is deeply, deeply unqualified to run a second term. And I say that because Biden is less strong now than he was back in 2020. And every single elected Democrat, every single Democrat pundit, they need to acknowledge that they have a responsibility currently to exert the maximum amount of pressure on Joe Biden to get him to not seek a second term. And he needs to make this announcement really quickly so that way Democrats can have a robust primary. So that way a new winner can emerge who actually has a better shot at beating Donald Trump. Now, Joe Biden, I mean, to his credit, uh, just a couple of months ago, hypothetical matchups showed that he did narrowly defeat Donald Trump, although those same polls showed that he was weak to DeSantis. But either way, you know, he can beat Donald Trump. But here's the thing. I'm not willing to roll the dice with Joe Biden. I'm not willing to tempt fate when so much is on the line. Democrats need to nominate someone who actually has a better chance at beating Donald Trump. Ideally, somebody who is progressive, who can galvanize the base and excite young people in particular, because Biden, unfortunately, just he doesn't have that appeal. Now, a lot can change between now and 2024. But the one thing that Biden did that really excited young people, canceling student debt, is now up in the air. So we need someone, a Bernie Sanders type, maybe not Bernie Sanders himself, because I don't know if he wants to run. He says that he would run if Biden stepped down. But somebody with progressive bona fides who is willing to fight, willing to pass policies and not just bow to his own party, not just bow to special interests. And I know that I'm asking for a lot here, but that's what we need if we truly want to stop fascism and a Marjorie Taylor Greene presidency potentially. And a lot of this comes down to uh, Norway Democrats and who they choose and whether or not they'll once again fall for the propaganda that props up really crusty old establishment Democrats like Joe Biden. Now, electability was the core argument that resonated with Normie Democrats back in 2020, and it got a lot of them to vote for Biden over Sanders, even if they agreed with Bernie Sanders' policies more than Joe Biden's policies. So if they're consistent, they need to acknowledge that we are tempting fate here by going with Biden again. He is no longer the most electable to take on Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. We need new blood. But I say that knowing that normie Democrats aren't going to have a choice if Biden decides to run again because a primary challenge to an incumbent president. I mean, I absolutely will support those primary challengers. Marianne Williamson seems like she's going to step up to the plate, but it's going to be really, really difficult for her to to beat Joe Biden, for anyone to beat Joe Biden. So it comes down to Biden and whether or not he's going to choose to hold the entire party hostage for his own political ambitions, for his own legacy. Don't roll the dice with Biden. Biden, step down, and this can be facilitated. He can be pressured to step down if enough Democrats all make it very clear that he needs to go. Now, the last time that Democrats... I don't want to say that they exerted pressure on Biden to not run for a second term, but they wouldn't answer questions specifically with regard to him running in 2024 was when he was down in the polls, when his approval rating was in the tank. So I think that in the event that happens, we will see some Democrats speak up, those with courage, those with spines. But ultimately, regardless of where he stands, he's just not the guy to take on Donald Trump. Can he beat Trump? It's a possibility, but I think that he's one of the weaker options. And Democrats do have better people who can take on Trump and win and save us from a Trump green White House. I mean, imagine how terrible that would be. Imagine how much more emboldened Trump would be if he had someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene who has his back. But, you know, uh, Pence's president, uh, vice president, 
he went along with what a lot of Trump wanted, but he didn't do what Trump asked when Trump wanted to steal the election. But Marjorie Taylor Greene would have no problem doing something like that. Now, Trump would be term limited out if he did win. But I mean, it's Donald Trump. Who knows what he might try? And we know without question, Marjorie Taylor Greene would be a loyal servant to Donald Trump. So let's be real here, folks. This is a catastrophe. If Trump were to get in and if Marjorie Taylor Greene was his VP, I mean, I don't even want to imagine the damage that they could do. So Democrats need to get their shit together. They need to wake up and they need to exert as much pressure as possible on Biden to get him to announce that he's not seeking a second term as soon as possible. So Democrats can actually nominate someone with a shot. So we don't have to worry about Marjorie Taylor Greene coming that close to the ultimate power in the United States. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.